Hello there and welcome. I'm Machine Dana. I hope you're having a wonderful, wonderful day. So Twitch have recently announced that you can have animated emotes. They're available right now to partners as of like 12 hours ago and they'll be coming later in the year for Twitch affiliates. I did an earlier video about this, all about all the different nuances to this. So check out the video. Like, just check it out if you want. In this video, I'm going to be going through how you can create the GIF images perfectly sized for Twitch so that they're animated and ready to go. So this is prepping you to be able to immediately, as soon as this is available to you right now, if you're a partner, soon if you're an affiliate, to create and add these GIF animations to your channel. They're going to make a big difference. You get five extra slots straight away on top of the existing five that you can get as a maximum as an affiliate and it scales with partners. So in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how you can make the GIFs in Photoshop. Photoshop. I'll talk a little bit about the animated GIFs and some of the restrictions to do with that. I'll show you how you can save the file, upload the file. If you do find it useful, hit the like. Feel free to subscribe to the channel. I'd appreciate that a lot. And yeah, let's do this. Okay, so first things first, there's a new section within the emotes called library, which means you can upload a lot more than you normally could have. And then you can activate or deactivate emotes as you see fit. So you've basically got a library of emotes, both standard and animated, if you're eligible for the animated ones. And you can just drag and drop them in and out. You can search for them, filter them, all of that good stuff. You can upload new ones using the upload button here. And this is located under the created dashboard under emotes section on your Twitch panel. Briefly, just about the actual emotes themselves. So the sizes of the emotes are exactly the same as what they are for the standard so the gifts are absolutely no different to that so it doesn't matter if you upload a massive gif they will be resized down to the smaller size it's in your interest to just size these to the perfect size to start with so then you're not having to kind of mess around with distortions and things like that in fact i don't think twitch will even allow you to upload a non-perfectly square gif emote and in any case if the size of the file is more than 4096 by 4096 pixels or above one megabyte in size you won't be able to upload it anyway so the best thing to do is to create a canvas that is 112 by 112 pixels to start with and create your GIFs out from there. You can have a maximum of 60 frames, but you don't have to have 60 frames. Many people suggested 10, 20 or 30 frames is more than enough for a really good interactive GIF. And the three sizes that are available are in keeping with the normal animations that you've got, which are 28 by 28, 56 by 56 and 112 by 112 pixels. You don't have to create the GIFs in the three different sizes. The best thing to do will be to create them in the largest size, which is the 112 by 112 pixels pixels and then allow Twitch to resize that down for you. The Twitch resizing of emotes is normally pretty good. So I'm into Photoshop. I thought about doing this in something like GIMP or something like that because this isn't free of charge, but I'm more accustomed to using Photoshop. You can use any program you like that has the ability to create and save GIFs. I'm going to use Photoshop for this. I don't currently have an affiliate code for Adobe Creative Suite or Photoshop, but I've applied for one right now. And by the time this video goes live, or maybe in a couple of weeks time, there should be an affiliate code which you can check out below that'll hopefully give you some money off or if you just want to support the channel and you want to buy adobe photoshop please use the link and that'll help me so i'm here in photoshop first we want to do is when we go onto the file new section we can create a new canvas we want to make sure that this width is 112 by 112 in height and we want to make sure that it's in pixels that gives us the canvas size that is perfect for the largest size gift that we're going to be creating make sure it's color and all the rest of it and check out all these settings and we'll create that you can use control and the plus icon to zoom in or the control and the minus icon to zoom out. You want to just go on to view and proof setup here. Make sure it's on monitor RGB, which you just make sure the color is correct to your monitor. Make it a little bit more white rather than like nicotine colored. <laughs> what we want to do is we want to create a new layer here. We want to delete... The background, we've now got transparency in this layer. From here, we can create more layers with the plus icon here in the bottom right hand corner. And as I said, we can have up to 60 layers maximum, but anywhere between 10 and 30 is going to be more than enough to create really good animated emotes and GIFs. And now all you need to do is frame by frame, create movements of pictures, whether that's resizing, recoloring, spinning, all kinds of different things like that. So I'm just going to delete this for now because I've prepared a set of layers here. It's just 10 layers to start with, just to illustrate how this works and just to quickly go through so we hold shift and click on these eyeballs it'll get rid of all the layers visibility in photoshop the first layer will be blank the second layer is like that third layer four five six seven eight nine 
and 10. So that's basically the robot coming up and the wolf hearts coming in and then pushing out to the screen. But of course, you can be as creative as this as you dare to be. So we've now got our 10 layers. I'm going to make sure that they are visible. It's really important that you make sure these are visible. I'm now actually going to select all layers by holding shift, clicking the top layer, hold, keep holding shift, and click the bottom layer. We've now selected all of these layers. Bear in mind as well, at any point, if you want to duplicate a layer, you can click on a layer and control J, which will duplicate that layer here, and we can double click to name it. In this case, let's say I want to name this one zero. Control T will transform it. I want to make the love heart even bigger, as an example. So you want to hold shift and click the top and bottom, which will select everything in between. We now have our layers selected and they are visible. What we now need to do is go onto the window view here, and we want to go onto the timeline view. This will show the timeline view within Photoshop. Now, by default, this is all the way down here. We're going to be doing some nice, nifty stuff. There's been some updates in Photoshop. Photoshop. There's a lot more flexibility within Photoshop in terms of like management of frames and extending the frames and things like that. So we now have a timeline. If I just move my camera here, you can see we can create video timeline. So with the item selected and visible, we want to create video timeline. It's created a timeline here from the sections and the frames, and I've named the sections 1 through 10. You can name them what you like, but it's just for convenience that I've done that. Actually, I should have named this one 10 and this one 1 and done it the other way around because I want that to be the last frame, but we'll sort that out later. So we've got a video timeline here. What I'm going to just do is click this section here, and I want to convert the frames into clips. So I'm going to make frames from clips. And and all that does is makes these single layers here into single clips and frames. And we can then play around with these frames on the video player. So I'm going to move my camera back down here. So we've got this video layer. You never used to be able to do this. So they've improved the user experience in the last year or so on Photoshop. I think it's like 2021 or something. So if you don't see these layers, then don't worry too much. There are things that you can do. But all the options will be here or in the bottom corner here. For example, selecting the time scale and things like that. The user experience on 2021 allows you to drag the actual time frame down a little bit. And these are all frames. So each one of these sections here, and we can move forward like by selecting this playhead pulling it forward just to have a preview of what it looks like or you can even just press play and see what it looks like and press stop now i'm gonna make this let's say i could i could just make this the 10 frames that i've designed and every single picture is one frame but i feel like it looks a little bit janky so what i'm just gonna do here is i'm gonna extend the frames out to let's say 25 remember you can only go to a maximum of 60 frames which puts it i think around about here two seconds so let's extend it to about 25 and also i've said that these are in reverse so what i'm just gonna do here is swap all of these layers around so that it does it in the reverse order. The first frame is the blank screen rather than the first frame being the love heart. So now the first layer is the blank layer and the last layer is the love heart layer. Bear in mind, this is a perfect square. And again, it's 112 by 112 pixels here. If I now get rid of the visibility of these, you can see that it will disappear. I want to show the visibility on everything and now we see frame by frame they'll appear we can manipulate each one of these essentially like play sections to be longer or shorter and obviously the minimum it can be is one single frame so now for example if i want to let the love heart be on screen for a little bit longer for like sort of 10 or 11 frames i can extend that out and press play and you see the love heart stays there at the end it still looks a little bit janky to me so i'm just gonna reduce that but pull it further along and this second heart here which is this frame I'm going to extend that to be there. So all I've done here is just manipulate every one of these to the stage that I like. And I can pull the playhead back, press play to preview it. And I'm a little bit more happy with that. It's not perfect, but for now, for the sake of demonstration, this is absolutely fine. Once you're happy with the number of layers, the composition of layers, and how many frames each layer is sticking for, what you now need to do is go into File, Export, Save for Web Legacy to save it as a GIF. Within this option here, we just want to make sure that it is optimized file format for GIF. So select GIF here. If you want to preserve the transparency within your GIF, in other words, if you have the alpha channel somewhere within your GIF, then you want to make sure that the Transparency is selected here. There's a number of different options here for color options. For example, you could set it to black and white or whatever. I'm just going to go ahead and hit save on this. And on the desktop, I'm going to rename this and click save. Now we'll see on the desktop, there's this icon here. If I double click and open it, you can see the GIF preview. So now all we have to do is go into Twitch. We need to click on the upload new button. You will have, if you've got eligibility to upload animated emote, a section here, which is upload animated emote. You just then need to simply drag this in 
to the area. Make sure that before you do this, auto resize is selected, which will then resize it to the 56 and the 28 size. You then have to give it a name as normal, hit the upload button, and that's it. So there you have it, how you can easily and quickly create GIF and animated emotes within Photoshop. I'm sorry I've not done this on a free version of it, but there's definitely a, a very similar way that you can do this within a program called GIMP, which is not a program I use, but I know it's a free version of Photoshop. If you did find this useful, give me some machine love and let me know in the comments and hit the like and sub and all that kind of stuff. And have a wonderful day. Take care.